Hello, my name's Justin Hartree, and I'm here again at the Oxfam Supply Centre. Now, we recently announced some changes to the Oxfam steel tank kit. We've got a new low profile roof, and we've got a new liner. Today, we're going to go through an in depth installation guide for the new liner kit. Watch out for the other videos as they come online because we've got separate ones for each of the components. Although this is about the new liner, the procedure is fundamentally the same. So whatever you're using in the field, this is going to be really useful to you. The main difference between the new liner kit and the old one is the choice of material. We have replaced the old rubber liner with this new lightweight PVC one. The new liner is not only much lighter, but it's also much cheaper than the rubber one. We have used some of this saving to include more essential accessories in the kit. And even then, the final cost is lower than before. Let's take a look at what you get in the liner kit itself. There are a number of items which are used for assembly of the steel tank walls. You get a big bag of bolts and you get various tools. We'll cover those in a separate video. We'll focus here on the installation of the liner itself. Uh, this is a T45, the 45 cubic meter kit. The kits are essentially the same. You'll just get a bigger liner. We have two lengths of plastic capping for the top of the tank walls, a geotextile base mat, a repair kit. There's lots and lots of gaffer tape for covering up all the metal bolts to stop them coming into contact with the liner. There's also these little plastic bolt caps which go on the end of the bolts outside the tank to protect the liner. We provide a complete set of all the fittings you will need to install the inlets and the outlets and all the necessary tools to help you do this. We have some blanking plates to cover up any holes in the tank wall that you're not going to be using. There are some thick socks for the people working inside the tank. This is to prevent damage for the liner as they're moving around. And a rubber mat to protect the liner from the ladder or whatever you're going to stand on. Now we also include this new sight glass kit. This helps you see the water level in the tank without having to get up on top and open the hatch. Finally, we have the instructions. It's best to read these carefully and familiarize yourself and then refer to them during the build. The build is simple. Installation of the liner is not difficult, but it is easy to get things wrong. And you don't want to do damage to the liner itself, which is the most expensive item. What we don't provide, of course, is the team that you're going to need to install the liner. Now, we suggest four or five skilled people. That's all you'll need. They need to be briefed, they need to be familiar with the process and able to follow instructions. It's not a difficult thing to do, but you don't want to get it wrong. For the larger tanks, there are a couple of steps which will require some extras maybe for holding ladders, lifting uh, the equipment, maybe pulling on ropes. But for the main part, it's best to limit the team to four or five people. Before we start, let's just remind ourselves of something. The liner material itself is very, very strong, but it's not going to be immune to tears or punctures. And because of this, we're going to be very careful during the installation. We're going to do some simple things to mitigate this. What we'll do is remove anything sharp that could be on the floor of the tank, and we're going to cover up any sharp edges in the walls. We're going to avoid having folds or creases in the liner. And we're going to make sure that anyone working inside the tank and walking on it is wearing the protective socks. Remember that when this is full, it's going to be holding 45 tons of water. And the liner is going to be taking all the weight of that against the walls and the floor. So with that in mind, the first thing we're going to do is go over all these seams in the tank and all the bolt heads and cover them with this heavy duty gaffer tape and this will protect the liner from anything sharp. The kit contains this heavy duty duct tape, but we're demonstrating today using some light masking tape. This is because once we've made the video, we're gonna pack the steels away and we don't want them covered with sticky glue. So go around the whole tank covering up the seams and all the bolts. Don't skimp on this process, it's really important. The next step is to install the inner capping. The liner is gonna get pulled over the top of the tank rim and the steel edge is very sharp and this would destroy the liner. So we need to protect it by putting on this plastic capping. 
over the edge. There are two lengths of capping in the kit, and for the inner capping, you want to use the one with the smallest slit. If you find it easy to put this on, you're probably using the wrong piece. To be honest, this is a bit of a tricky operation and there is definitely a knack to it. It's really a three person job. The best way is for one person to be pushing the capping onto the steel, and this requires a bit of force. With a second assistant to feed the capping along, holding it up at right angles and making sure the slit is lining up with the steel. The third person needs to hold the coil and twist that to help keep it all in line. Keep at it and don't give up. Once you've gone all the way round, cut off any excess capping so that you have a complete circle all the way round the rim. Once you've got the capping in place, the next step is to lay out the geotextile mat. This is there to act as a cushion between the ground and the liner. Now the team that have been uh, putting up the walls and preparing the ground should have done a really good job. But it's always best to check for anything sharp like stones or things that have been dropped and make sure these are removed first. Once this is done, we can unroll the geotextile mat. The mat itself is square, so as you come to the edges, you're gonna to have to fold it in or cut it to take on the circular shape of the tank. So we've got the geotex matting down the cushion. Uh, the last thing we have to do inside the tank is uh, fit our flanges. So I'm going to fit this at the low level. This is going to be my outlet. <clears throat> you dismantle it, and you can see that the flange has a part here with clearance holes, so it pulls off, whereas this part has threaded holes, and these have to rotate to go through it. There's two gaskets one to go either side of the liner. So we'll leave one on and we'll offer it up to the holes. Now, if this is a bit awkward, a bit stiff, you can just use a round file and change the way, change them a bit. But that feels, it fits nicely now. We'll go around to the outside and I'll show you how to attach that side. Right, here on the outside, this is our flange coming through. I'm just going to put a couple of these on just so I know it's not going to drop back in. So I'll put these on a few turns. <clears throat> now when you're doing this on a, a, uh, an earth surface or on sand, you've prepared the ground. This, all, this part's very easy because you can just dig a hole here to make the fitting of the the components simpler. But if you've used a concrete base, like we have at the warehouse, you can't rotate your valves to get them on. So this is what I do. This is my T. I'm attaching, a, I'm gonna use a sight glass on this tank, so I want this T facing vertically. I've left this loose so I can move it. I could thread on my T, leaving it vertical at the end. Now I'm in a warehouse and there's no water involved, but you of course will be using your PTFE tape. So that's in position. I can still tip it back a bit, and I've still got enough space to rotate my valve. Again, with my PTFE tape, I can get that so that my valve is sitting vertically as well. And at this point, I can do up all my flange bolts. And I use my spanner, I'm going to tighten them into position. So we expect you to maybe just start to bend the corrugations here. You want this good and tight. These aren't going to move again. There we go, that's my outlet. All right, so the last thing we're going to do before fitting the liner is cover up these bolts on the outside. 
line is going to come up over the top and it's going to come down the tank to about here, about 30 centimetres or over covering six bolts. And we've got this little set of covers here which will just protect them. The bolts are sharp and when the line is tight, we don't want them, don't want them ripping the liner. Well, that's it. We're all ready to go. We've got the geotex down, we've got the flanges in place, we've got the liner in the centre of the tank. Now from this point on, you want a couple of people working the tank, but the rule is no shoes. We've got the protective socks on because we're going to be walking on the protective on the liner. And we don't want to cause any damage. Put the folded liner into the centre of the tank floor and then unfold it so that the seam is up against the bottom of the walls all the way round. Take your time here. We don't want it to be skew. We definitely don't want any folds or creases in the base. Remember, this is going to have 45 tonnes of water bearing down on it. We don't want to create any points of strain. Now the liner is laid out, we can pull it up and over the rim. Start with two people inside together lifting up and then work around the tank in opposite directions. The liner gets a bit tighter as you get towards the end. There's a top tip here. Before you start, go around with some soap or some washing up liquid and just put a little bit on the capping. It makes it so much easier to pull the PVC liner over it. When the liner is all pulled down evenly and the inside is nice and neat, go around with the other length of capping and attach the clips every 30 centimetres or so. So the liner is hanging down and you can see it's a bit baggy. Now it needs to be like this so that when the water fills, the liner will go into the corrugations as the water rises. And that will happen all the way around the tank. So just smooth out the floor, check the seam is into the corner. With the T70 and the T95, the process is a little bit different. You need a, a larger crew and you'll pull the liner up with ropes because it's going to be much higher. But essentially the same practice should be followed throughout. Get the liner smooth, get the spools right and you'll be okay. So here we are. We've got the whole liner installed. We've done the final checks inside. We've got the seams up to the edge and it's slightly baggy down the walls. We've cleaned everything out. Everybody's out except for one person wearing their protective socks. We come the most risky and therefore potentially the most expensive part of the whole show. We're going to fit the uh, inlets and outlets. This is the inside of the flange kit. And the idea is to get the liner tight between these two gaskets which means we're going to cut the bolt holes and slide this onto the outer flange, which I can feel here. There are my four bolts. This is finally where the sharp knife comes into play. OK, so we'll check the position of our bolts. We know where they are. Um, just make sure the materials are OK around the outside. We've got a bit of baggy material at the bottom. Up the side, we can smooth, smooth away. Everything's loose. Nothing's taut at the moment. Um, we have to start cutting our holes. If you push onto the bolt, you can see exactly where the circle is going to be. Now, what you're going to try and do is cut a smaller circle around this as possible. I'm starting at the bottom one, which is the best idea. So I'm pressing against it, and I'm going to use the blade going round, cutting against the steel of the bolt. This way, I can locate the bolt and try and make a smaller hole as possible. You've got to be very careful here. You're barely using any force. The last thing you want is for the knife to slip across the liner. So just take your time, a little bit at a time, small cuts, and gradually a hole will appear and you'll be able to push it over the first bolt. Once you've done that, the second one I'm starting opposite becomes much easier because the liner isn't moving as much. But doing the same thing, just holding it against the bolt, and making small cuts. This whole process, you know, it's going to take you 10 minutes. You're taking your time, you're being very careful. But gradually, 
you'll get around the four bolt pattern and have hopefully four nice bolt holes. Now you can slide the liner back down the bolts into position. Check that it's all flat, and once you're happy, try on the inner gasket. Push that into place. Again, just checking the line is all good. And if you're still happy, you can push on the inner flange. Now when these bind together, there's no water is gonna pass between the liner and the gaskets. The only way that any water is gonna weep out and leave this tank is actually past these uh, washers and down the bolt thread. So what we're gonna have to do is use some PTFE tape and go around each of these bolts, just building up a little washer of PTFE so that when your uh, steel washer and nut come against this and tighten against the flange, it's gonna compact and fill the flange hole. Take your time, use a bit of tape, and just do them one at a time. Do the nut up finger tight and then move on. Once you've got the four bolts all done finger tight, take your spanner and just gradually tighten them a quarter of a turn each, going in diagonal or in a star pattern across the bolts. One final check to make sure that the line is all smooth and it's smooth inside. Take your knife and don't forget to cut out your outlet hole. And there you go, that's your outlet flange fitted. Okay, so here I am back outside the tank and we've got a mock-up here of a section of liner and capping. Uh, I've not used the real liner because I don't want to cut that. But what I've done here is I've used this panel with a centre hole and I'm going to use this outlet here to install my tank overflow. Now there's two reasons for using the centre hole. First, when you pull over your liner, as you can see in the video, it'll come down to here and it'll be tight. And this sits lower than that, it'll be, there'll be no interference. You don't have to make any cuts around it or anything. And the second reason, you'll be thinking I'm gonna lose all that capacity. Well, I'll show you what I've done inside so that doesn't happen. So on the inside, I've got an elbow here, which is included in the kit. And I've got some other fittings from my warehouse. And all I'm gonna do is use a bit of tube and set it so that now my overflow level is about five centimeters down from the very top. So I'll have PTFE tape around my joints, it's all together. And by raising that up to that height, I've increased the capacity of my tank by about four and a half cubic meters, which is about 10%, so that's significant. The new liner kit comes with this sight glass. Uh, this allows you to see the water level in your tank without having to climb on top, open the hatch and peer inside. It saves hassle and reduces the risk of contamination of your water. It's a few simple fittings and a clear tube. There's a float which will go up and down with the water level. We also supply this separately so you can retrofit it to existing tanks. So there you have it, the liner and the fittings fully assembled. The whole process took us about three hours. Now this liner is gonna last you for many, many years, providing you install it correctly. There are some simple things to remember. Use a small team, hopefully ones who've watched the video in advance and read the instructions. Make sure any sharp or hard objects are removed from the base before you install the liner and also cover up all the fittings and the sharp points in the tank walls. The third thing is to work slowly and methodically. Just take your time and get it right. If you've got any feedback or any questions, get in touch with us via the website. And thanks for watching.